qualifiers for the Dream versus CDEC. We are getting towards the tail end of the group stage here. And, well, for some of these teams like FTD, these matches matter a lot. Uh, for some of these teams like CDC, unfortunately, this is their last game of the group stage, and they are already mathematically eliminated. They are 0 and 6. There's a little bit of pride on the line, of course, here, uh, but we will see what ends up happening. So, this is relatively important for FTD. They're 4 and 1. I'm actually going to be following FTD in their last two matches here uh, against CDC in this match, and then LFY. In the next one, LFY looking pretty Ten good. They won that previous game, so they're now 4-2. Uh, and it turns out that maybe Liquipedia didn't have it completely right. They had IG marked as uh, guaranteed through at 4-1, and one, but it now appears with a 4-2 and two record that they could actually be out of top 4 contention. Uh, in terms of other bracket updates, it looks like IG Vitality having lost again they have ended their qualifier Radiant run here uh, with a two and five score so unfortunately they are not going to be able to make it through Radiant into team the team playoff pick. portion of this qualifier and we've had a, we've got a ton of drafts in front of us neither team has used any reserve time just yet so Radiant let's run it down real pick. fast FTD with the Naga Jakiro combo it's a nice early death profit push CDEC going for Marana Clockwork Shadow Fiend uh, I think we saw them run... Did they run this Clock SF the other day as well? And then they put it in a side lane, and then they just lost all their lanes ridiculously Dying hard, and they, they lost the game in, in record time. Is that, is that what happened? I seem to remember that happening. I, I really don't know if I like their lanes very much at the moment. I don't think... SF versus DP is pretty good if you have some setup, you know, not it wasn't that long ago that people were picking Tusk Radiant SF to really battle. just dump all Shrek. over uh, you know, To really just completely dump all over Death Prophet in the mid lane so And yeah, I don't know I do like this Lesh pick I don't know if it's gonna be played core if they if they're picking the Lesh to counter the Phantom Lancer then I guess it does have to be Played core in that situation. Could maybe be a position for Marana in that case, but remaining. that also doesn't feel like a particularly strong laning hero. Five and FTD's lanes remaining. are just gross. They're they're really really solid. Jakiro and Naga, I think, two of the best laning supports in the game at the moment, and with the added benefit of being amazing teamfight heroes. Uh, on top of that, they also, it feels like they really just have the teamfight superiority out and out. They can song into a silence, they can song into ice path, can song disengage. They've got the exorcism, which is going to be very difficult to deal with unless they burst down the DP. And I feel like CDEC only have enough damage and control for one of the Phantom Lancer and the Death Prop, but they're not going to have enough for both. But... Some of these doom and gloom premonitions, I think, are also coming from the fact that CDC have just not looked very good in this qualifier at all. Um, but let's let's see. I want to see what that uh, if they were the team that picked the clock SF the other day. I think that they were. Let's have a look. Matches. Dia team pick. Um, no, maybe they weren't. Uh, maybe it was a different team. I guess I am misremembering here, but uh, this is actually, it looks like the first time that they've tried to pick this particular combo. Uh, most of their games have been pretty short, unfortunately. Recent loss to Team Serenity, 23 minutes. Ten seconds lost to remaining. LFY, 23 minutes. Uh, lost to Young Dumb, 37. Lost to remaining. IG, 31. I lost to IGV 49 Radiant and lost to pick. King Gaming in 24. So. And now they just pick Slark? How do you just pick Slark? What, what's good about Slark this game? I, I don't think he's particularly great against Naga. Their lanes are not very strong. I, I don't know what Slark is supposed to do. But I think CDC might just be like, ah, what do you guys, guys want to play? So this last game of qualifiers, we have to play it. So we'll, we'll see what happens. They might remaining. just get completely dumped on in the lanes and then GG out pretty quickly. And for FTD, they are probably looking... I mean, they're just looking for a side lane hero. Uh, they have tons of options, really. Uh, I think this is actually a decent pango game. Um, not a terrible tide game. 
If they wanted to, they could also like Brewmaster or Underlord or Doom. Doom works just fine. Good lane pressure hero. Works pretty well with either of these two supports and not a whole lot of ways for CDC to disengage and deal with this. So, I don't know. Maybe, maybe the Shadow Fiend with the bonus damage from the Clockwork can do all right in his lane, but I don't see... I don't think the... Oh, maybe the Lesh Marana lane is okay. But then they have a Slark Clockwork as the safe lane, which is just going to get completely destroyed. So I think they have to put the range support with the Slark just to give him any chance of having a playable game. But that means that they have Clockwork Marana. This, this Clockwork pick just feels really out of place. Hmm. <laughs> Color me unimpressed, but we have had some surprising games and some upsets here in the TI8 China qualifiers, so I'm not going to completely count that out. But I'm also going to look at the schedule and see what the other match that is going on at the moment is. Let's have a look. It is... I got some tips going on, a little bit of pause. The other match, I think, that should be going on right this second... Uh, will be Keen Gaming versus Young Dumb. Which is actually a match with some potential playoff implications. Keen are 3-3. Three and three. Young Dumb are 2-3. and three. Uh, So there is a chance for Keen Gaming to end 4-3. and three. Yeah, So both of those two teams could actually end their run 4-3, and three, which would be potentially just enough to sneak them into the top four. Um, the other possibility is that, yeah, so the other possibility is that we end up with some tiebreakers. So uh, we'll, we'll, I guess we'll figure it out as we get a little bit further in. I am anticipating that, so FTD will probably end 5-2, and two, Serenity 5-2, and two, LFY, their last match is versus FTD. Oh no, so FTD could actually still end 6-1. and one. Hmm. Interesting, interesting. And anyway, let me change uh, let me swap the overlay. Sorry about that, guys. I'm getting getting caught up thinking about all these China playoff possibilities. We got a we got a match to cast. So we got the SF all souped up with his souls, but that means that they've pretty much completely sacrificed any bounty rune control. Like you look at the Doom, you're like, where are these guys? There's there's nobody here. Uh, James has been playing phenomenally, in my opinion, in this qualifier. I think his position four play has been really, really good. So looking forward to seeing what he can get done on this Naga Siren. Let's have this that shield picked up. So very much a lane focused build for him here. And he's going to be able to trade hits insanely effectively with the staff shield and seven armor. This is a double melee lane for the Phantom Lancer and the Naga. It's what, double melee versus the ranged, uh, ranged melee. But I still actually quite like this FTD lane. And... Marana, where is she off to here? So Marana's gonna swap over to top. They're gonna bring the Slark down to bottom. I don't know, maybe he can do a little bit better down here, but this Jakiro Doom lane is not gonna be fun for anyone to play against. At least they're gonna put their two ranged heroes up against it. Uh, Love You Love Me, I think, has also been playing quite well, though this matchup is gonna be complicated a little bit by these Already stacked up. Oh, this already stacked up. Necromaster. Trying for the glyph. Well, not trying, but love you, love me. Making life a little bit more difficult right at the start here. Not as important that he gets the denies. Down bottom, a little bit of cog pushback onto the Phantom Lancer, but they're just going to go straight onto Slark. Lesh makes an appearance. Does the blob out of stun onto the Naga. I don't think they can really find a kill here. It's just going to be a bunch of harassment traded back and forth as Raji. Gonna block the small camp. Unfortunately, it's a centaur in the big camp. If it was a satyr, that could be potentially laying over right then and there. And we're actually gonna have a full tri lane versus tri lane. Check it out, folks. In this dual lane meta of all things, we are actually gonna have ourselves an old fashioned tri v tri. And looks like James knows exactly what's going on. The name of the game in a tri lane versus tri lane is you gotta get that marginal advantage. In. The way that you get that is running pulls. You get the experience, you get the extra level ahead of the other guys, and you go from there. 
over at mid. Yeah, Death Prophet not having a very fun time, but we'll keep our eyes on the tri lane stun. Gonna completely whiff. Raji waiting in the trees, but wants to save that bit of extra mana for an actual kill attempt. Maybe once they get some level twos up. Slark finding some farm. Hasn't skilled anything at the moment. Really holding on to those skill points. I'm a little bit surprised not to see a point in the pounce, but... Ego seems to know what he's doing. You should. Game's going in. He's inside of the cogs. Who's actually trapped with who? The stun coming through. The Naga's tanky, but maybe not tanky enough. He's got wand charges, but the battery assault and the lightning will prevent any kind of a turnaround, and it's actually a first blood for CDEC as they now go running forward looking for a little bit more. They slow down Raji. Can they get the stun? Looks like they shouldn't be able to, and James now going to try for the turnaround, but it's still only a level one Naga. They don't have the net. And that is actually going to be CDC getting away with their lives. Okay. Doom is out CSing the Mirana for the time being up at top, but the lane's only going to get easier as the Mirana continues to pick up more damage. And no Satter to be found. So, not going to have that busted regen aura for the Doom here. James just gonna go and hit another pull. Oh, I have a little bit of egg on my face about how this laning stage is going. I really thought that FTD were just gonna completely crush the lanes and that the clockwork wasn't really gonna be able to accomplish anything, but Marlin looking pretty good. They do get a little D ward around the corner here, but needing to be careful. So they're just gonna try and grab these CS from the high ground as Phantom Lancer continue to farm up underneath his tower. Unfortunately, PL not necessarily the best tri-lane versus tri-lane hero, so that's certainly something to watch out for as SF going double Wraith Band. Oh, somehow Marlin's up here on the high ground with a two-man cog. I don't know quite how that happened, but all right, that worked out great. Got a little bit of damage down, some more harassment being traded back and forth. Marana now already head of the Doom in terms of farm, and... FTD, I guess, with no real options to go and apply pressure elsewhere. They don't want to expose their Phantom Lancer to any undue pressure. Even with the extra souls, the SF is still not winning this game by that much, but it does have a pretty significant HP advantage over the Death Prophet right now, who is probably going to have to ferry out yet another salve. Clark slightly behind the PL on farm. James with a haster and wanting to make some kind of a wraparound. Not very easy to go on the Slark, but the Lesh is certainly a potential kill if he gets a little bit too far out of position. My one concern once we get out of the laning phase for CDC is that it's a little bit difficult for them to make plays until they get their initial batch of items. They have okay you rotating have heroes, no right. um, but they also are very pick off for Lion. Like, if they don't find pickoffs and continue to keep the map split, and I think FTD just straight up win the game because of uh, nice dodge on that arrow. Uh, but I think FTD straight up just win the game because of better team fight. Beyond in quite a lot of trouble. They're getting the full battery assault damage. And now a little bit of body blocking coming in from Marlin. There's not enough leaps left, but there is a Star Storm. And Beyond's gonna be finished off by that. Nice. Raji coming in. Bit of harassment onto ASD and then just a straight up TP out to help out this Death Prophet over at the mid lane as James still just doing his thing down at bottom. Uh -oh. Go for the slash. Do some damage. Land the stun. No, it gets completely dodged. Phantom Lancer didn't get a point in the lance until level 4. And the Moonlight Shadow is going to help him get away along with his insanely high base move speed. And beyond, we've seen this story before. Trapped in the river. Clockwork right on top of him. SF gonna be coming over and looks like he might just be dead once again. There's an arrow in one direction and there's a raising SF in the other. Raji gonna try and help out. They're gonna try and find these kills. No level six in the Death Prophet either. Could be some kind of a turnaround. ASD maybe waiting a little bit too long to start that TP. He will get punished as we have seven or eight heroes converging on the mid lane. Slark's gonna go and take over the top lane, it looks Radiant's like, and Phantom Lancer still attack. just contentedly free farming down at bottom. Does pop his Aquila on to threaten this building a little bit with his Siege Creep partner, but. Radiant's top yeah, tower not not is too under much attack. more happening there. 
Sad for the SF to get some of his souls reset, though. But he's got three points in raise, so I don't think it's too much of a concern. He's sadder about the fact that he tried to TP and then he died. So he's got the walk of shame back to mid lane. Doom. Eh, playing catch up a little bit, but not too far behind the Mirana, who's just going to be going for some phase boots. Probably phase, uh, phase maelstrom kind of a build this game and Marlin with this clockwork rotation just runs straight up on the mid lane locks down love you love me but he actually wants to turn this one he gets out the two siphons pops the exorcism and just goes charging forward needs to be a little bit careful it's only gonna be a couple of auto attacks to finish him off he does have a fairy fire so he's baiting somewhat for the ghost to do their job but Raji instead will be the one to tank the brunt of those raises and will be brought down that's an exorcism forced and a kill where was this CDEC, the rest of the qualifier? What is going on here? I don't know. They, they might still drop the ball, but so far so good. They're up three kills. I don't know if they have the, the tools to deal with the Phantom Lancer, but we'll have to see. This could just be a game where PL completely takes over. There's, there's a bunch of different angles, I think, for FTD to start winning this game again. Either the PL just gets huge and completely wins Radiant's by himself, or the Naga Jakiro pull off some nice combos in team fights, and they win because of that. This is a very fine line for CDEC to have to tread. But they're, they're doing it pretty expertly so far. Really want to use this Doom to kill off the Slark up top, but Ego maybe suspecting what's going on. Gonna try and wrap in on him from the side. Oh, he comes forward. If they get the Doom off, then he should straight up be dead. They have an ice path or anything beyond looking to cut him off on the other side. Completely trapped in the trees. Do they have any detection, though? Hello? Any detection? Any detection at all? Just randomly riptide him. No. All right, he's he's good. Doesn't even have level six, but Slark is apparently fine. They did not. They neglected to bring any detection. And meanwhile, at the mid lane, love you, love me goes down once again to ASD on the shadow feed. All right. Uh, SF still just buying a lot of little items to start off the game. Phantom Lancer at the top of the net worth, but the rest of those top four spots are being filled by dire heroes at the moment. Slark still just trying to finish his level six and grab his treads, but yeah, that Doom was not a free kill. Raji grabs himself a sentry ward, but doesn't even have it delivered just yet. And Marlin, you know, gets a little bit of a hero's welcome on the mid lane. He's done a lot of work for his team so far, so they're going to give him some space. To grab his level 6 and let him keep on making plays. And same kind of story for Chikiro. Though, I mean, his, his level 6 isn't necessarily as impactful as the clockworks in terms of being able to make plays. Whoop. Mark swoops in. He wanted that bounty rune. Was it worth it though? He pops the shadow dance and then just immediately TP's bottom. I actually really like seeing that play when people realize that they don't have to panic TP all the way back to base. So now he can just go straight back to farming instead of having to uh, walk all the way down. Though I'm not sure if he wants to be here in this Phantom Lancer's lane. The PL can actually put some pressure on him. And he's pretty much oom with no shadow dance. So. I like the, I guess I like the play in principle, in practice, didn't turn out so great. And now we're going to have an exorcism pop to this top tier one. Can CDEC actually mount a defense? So they have the level six just yet. Clockwork's got this tome, but I don't think it's quite enough experience to get his level six, or is it? We'll, we'll find out in a second. Close for sure, but tier one's already dead. PL still free farming down bottom. Doom has just picked up some phase boots. Uh, not 100% clear what item he's going to be going for first. Would not mind seeing a blink dagger first on him at all this game, given that he is kind of the primary initiator, along with the Naga Siren. And CDC, right, we're, we're, we're looking for a hook here. It would like a target a little bit more impactful than the Jakiro, though, I suspect. Oh, a really nice Rocket Flare is going to reveal the positioning of the Doom and the Naga, so... They're forced to back up, and Sark gets to keep on happily hitting creeps.
but the PL is just sitting here. Radiant are scanning. They're, they're not doing anything about him at all. Got some decent vision. They're a little bit worried about a gank finding its way down to the PL. I think he's probably... He's thinking him to himself, like, this game is going too well for me. It's, it's too easy. No, nobody's coming to pressure me. Nobody's in my lane. There's definitely something suspicious going on. And he's right. Dive. They're smoked oh, up. They're looking for a kill with the clockwork, but it's not at bottom lane. Ella. Love you, love me is the one in a little bit of trouble. This bottom now he's going to go for the TP out, but there's no way that he gets this battery assault to cancel. Follow up stun from the Lesh. It's going to be another kill for ASD. Raji just going to shove mid in the meantime. Going to TP up top. It looks like to dump a macro pyre down and put an end to this push. Uh, but eh, maybe realizing that that was already coming. CD is here. Just going to back off. They're going to continue farming. We've got a dragon lance being worked towards by the Marana. I'm not sure if I'm a huge fan of this, but it's also not a Dyer's huge. Tower is under it's attack. like not a huge commitment. Still haven't seen the hookshot used just yet, so Marlin does have another opportunity. Out the sleeve. PL with the full farm build, only the one point in the spirit land. So the max out phantom rush, making his way to the jungle. And FTD looking keen to take out this mid tier one tower. They're just going to pop the exorcism for it. Yeah. Alright, that makes life quite a bit harder for CDC to initiate in here. They are going to pop the glyph. They could waste out a decent portion of the duration here. They've also got some shadow from spam to come through. They're going to hook into the back lines, looking for the Naga Siren. They won't be able to save him with a song, and the arrow flies through. Naga's going to end up dropping. Ice Path does connect nicely. The Exorcism is doing good damage, but they managed to burst down the Krob. Now the Phantom Lancer arrives on the scene, but he doesn't really contribute all that much. And CDEC not only take that fight, take two kills, and defend their Tier 2 tower. Oh, man. Alright. That was nice. Slark's got quite a bit of farm. Why is everybody everybody's playing double rates this game? It's kinda interesting. Just those value stats in the early game, I suppose. Oh, nice rune for Slark. Oh, trying with the arrow up top, a little bit off the mark to find the real Phantom Lancer, so looks like he's gonna be okay. He does almost have his defusal blade, so he's actually gonna be coming online kinda soon. But FCD were not expecting to lose that mid team fight the way that they did. They had exorcism running. It, they needed to kill the Naga. If they didn't hook the Naga, then like if Clock had missed that hook, they would have just been completely done so. Because there would have been a song reset, ice path, silence, DP doesn't get bursted. So very high risk, but it worked out great for them to be able to Radiant's hold onto that tower, tower a little bit. Is under attack. Two K net worth lead, almost a five K experience lead. In CDC's favor, did you get to zoom out onto the Slark? But can they actually kill him off? Is the question. The battle was for the bounty runes. It looks like Slark is actually going to be a okay. He's healing up, nice arrow connection. Naga Siren in big trouble. Does have some wand charges to try and stay alive a little bit longer, but James will still die in the end. CD still just sitting behind their tier ones, but. Looks like this bottom tier 1 tower is going to be brought Radiant down. Might be a little bit of a trade. They are sending the Mirana over to mid to try and hang on. And actually rotating some more heroes at the same time. Marlin comes running forward. Beyond Radiant's still not doing great on this Doom. He's going to be going attack. for a Shadow Blade this game. As opposed to the Blink Dagger as his preferred initiation option. But nice to see just either of the two. Definitely very Radiant important this game. Are fortified. Taking them a long time to finish off this bottom tier 1, so Radiant's FTD should suspect that something is going on. And actually, PL going to come TPing down here. Radiant's With the Defusal Blade, he does quite a lot of damage. Jules going to buy the SF a couple of seconds, and then they actually land the stun from the tree line. Les should be able to chase this one down. The Requiem comes flying out, and Phantom Lancer has bitten off way more than he can chew. That was supposed to be the grand unveiling of the Defusal Blade and a free kill, but instead, he's the one going down. And now Slark has a Shadow Blade. Alright, so he can start finding some pickoffs on these supports. Looks like SF was going for the TP out, but his TP gonna get cancelled beyond. And he closed this gap. Phase boots back off cooldown. ASD's pretty fast. 
Even sitting on the agi treads, a little bit of extra move speed. And they will not find anything there. They really need the catch from the Shadow Blade. Okay, so PL's grand unveiling didn't go so great, but he's still got room to grow this game. Uh, is there really any point in buying a Manta style? I don't think so. I don't mind the Yasha, but wouldn't mind just seeing a like an SNY build. He could also Radiant's go for a Shadow Blade this game. Which I don't think it would be too bad. Would not even be opposed to the straight up heart ego. Does he get this kill or is he just gonna end up being some stacks? Love You Love Me does have the Yule Scepter. He's got those two Spirit Siphons going. Marlin still with the hookshot on cooldown for a couple of seconds. Saves his own life, but Slark getting a couple of stacks out of that and they are going to immediately smoke up and try and find another pickoff. Raji, man, this is, this is such a sad ward. You still have this tier one mid and you have this tier two bottom, but you're just like, well, shit. We've actually completely lost control over our jungle, and I can't come all the way out here to put this ward, so I guess this has to be the next best alternative. Boom, there it goes. Ego knows that there's a ward somewhere, but he can't figure out where it is. Alright, they just popped out another ward. Hookshot in from the clockwork, but he didn't have the backup of his team. I think this is a step too far. Bad communication from CDEC is just going to end up being a free kill for the Phantom Lancer, it looks like. Oh. Thought his team was a little bit closer than they actually were. But that's only FTD's second kill of the game. Raji is still just farming up with his macro pyre. Up at the top. And actually managed to find some damage under the Shadow Fiend. He's gonna go for the Requiem Bomb Beyond, taking big damage, but manages to survive. They didn't have enough mana for the Doom, but they didn't need it. And that is a dominating streak ended. Love you, love me, gonna be very happy with that. Ego can even just, you can dive this for this kill, I'm pretty sure. Yule's coming up, cool down in one second. Love you, love me, just barely gets it off. Ego now forced to pop the Shadow Dance and run. James gonna close the gap. The song's already been used. He's got the net. He's trying to wait out the Dark Pack. But Ego's still able to get the leap off and get out of there just barely in time beyond hunting him down with the Infernal Blade. I like Slark going for that play. Unfortunately, just couldn't quite finish off the crop. This extra Null Talisman, I think, has turned out to be pretty value for Love You, Love Me this game. Though he didn't buy Wand, so... Maybe Wand would have done about the same thing. Oh no, Flesh, keeping out. Is he gonna make it in time? No. He gets completely slammed down. Uh, Phantom Lancer does decide against the Yasha at the end of the day. It's just gonna be going for the Heart. It's very, very difficult to kill. I like this a little bit better. You could go Yasha and then, but it's not a good Manta game, so if you're buying the Yasha, you're only really buying it for SNY, and if you're buying SNY, then why not just buy Heart? This would be my thoughts. Anywho, CDC, can we make another play? They've been doing pretty well so far. We got Blink Yules on the Shadow Fiend. I don't know if I like this build all that much, this game, given that there is really good counter-initiation from FTD, like Song, Ice Path, anything like that. Ego jumps across over onto the opposing high ground. Do they have any detection for him? Looks like he's just going to be able to get away courtesy of the Shadow Blade. Also breaks the smoke. It's a brave play, but it works out well. FTD just going to retreat back to the safety of their sentries. Might know that this Moonlight Shadow has been popped. What have they seen so far? Oh, they, they see a Radiant lot, actually. They know that Sark is here. Can they do it? Nope. Hook misses. This is really scary if you're CDEC. They need a good Requiem, but I don't think they can get it, James. Doesn't have the biggest AoE on the Song of the Sirens. Only level 1, so not easy for him to just pop it there and try and set up for this max rank Ice Path. But FTD, what are they going to do instead? Are they really just going to go Roche? This is really a good play. Roshan does a lot of damage, and there's Rocket Flare to scatter. Like, look at this. Everybody's already lost a couple hundred HP. They do have the PL Illusions to tank. Nicely done with the Illusions. Also going to be tanking up that arrow. FTD taking this fast. They've always got the song to protect. James is in a good spot. Clockwork, no hook either. Ego wants to try and jump in from the other side here to finish it off. The PL's kind of low. 
Look at this, she'll still be able to get it for him. They need that little bit of extra damage. The song now coming through. PL still getting arrowed. He might lose the Aegis quickly. Love you, love me. The Exorcism, a little bit more duration. Ice Path comes out now, it's still catching. That's going to be the end of the Leshrac, but Mirana jumps forward and looks to kill off Raji. He's down. They've lost the Phantom Lancer for the first time. Death Prophet healing back up, but he's going to get Requiem Bomb down. Able to survive a tiny bit longer, but it's also beyond trapped in the pit. And he's now also dead. They do at least manage to bring down the two that were caught in the Ice Path. Slark going down with even, without even being able to get his ultimate off. Hook attempted. Raji can run at. But they do have the Phantom Lancer here looking for a little bit of a turnaround, but there might be too much damage. Doppelganger's forward. Yule's buying another couple of seconds. James wants to finish this kill. And it's the Death Requiem that brings down the Phantom Lancer. <laughs> FTD. They thought they were safe going for the Roche because they had that Song of the Radiant's Siren, but instead it just turns out to be a, what, 6 for 3 fight, depending on how Radiant's you want to count the Aegis. Not what they were looking for. Raji actually even died and bought back. CDC. Radiant's Looking like middle they might be dragging fallen. FTD out of Radiant's the. Bottom tower is Man, there is a lot of, there's a lot of uh, kind of spiteful Allies plays happening here, and from the bottom side Radiant's of the China qualifier bracket. Beyond looks like he should at least be able to grab this kill. All right, that's nice. That's a mega kill streak for him. In fact, <laughs> tons of gold. Mid tower is taking some damage. Radiant's a little middle bit tower suspicious. is under attack. Oh, here you go. Right, we've seen this play before, but the Yules is actually on cooldown this time around, so it looks like Love You Love Me is going to be brought down. Ego last of the sliver of health, because that's nice to get the ultimate off, so he's going to be okay. Still waiting for this Phantom Lancer to really come into his own. Almost has the river. He's been sitting on so much gold. I mean, he must have been sitting on a ton of gold in that last fight. ASD at least now has the BKB, so it's going to be a little bit more difficult to interrupt his Requiem, but still possible. So the one shot isn't always going to be that easy. Ego pinging out this ward. Radiance top tower is under FTD are doing the best that they can with the vision Radiant control. Structures are fortified. Uh, still struggling a little bit. I think I just want to play for these two BKBs. Radiance BKB on the Death Prophet, BKB on the Doom, get the heart on the Phantom Lancer. I still think this is a game that the Phantom Lancer can more or less win all by himself, but he is not snowballing as hard as I was anticipating. Nope. Dyer's bottom tower not that is fast, attack. but just kind of running in here. What's the Murana got? Murana almost has an entire Mjolnir. Jesus. Actually Swift been farming very nicely. They don't even have that much setup this game. I guess they do have the hook. Hook, cogs, arrow. But. Does feel like Mirana is back in a big way. Like, it started out, people were just picking Bane Mirana, Naga Mirana. And now it seems like people are content to just play her for the strength of the hero as is. Oh. Speaking of Naga, gonna get blown up. Easy Requiem Bomb from ASD and then immediately blinks away. Oh, I tell you beyond he really wants this bounty. Oh, get it. Let's see the clockwork down on the oh, low ground. Oh, there you go. Part of Tarask, he's got 3k hit points. Still going to be going for the SNY afterwards. Just wants to tank up as much as humanly possible. Spots the clockwork here. Clock might be able to get a hook away if he can find the angle, but he's been blocked in by the illusions. to get a little bit of lockdown on the PL, but if he just gets a reset, it should still be a pretty good fight for FTD. Chasing down after the Leshrac, Raji knows what's up, he's just going to keep on charging forward, but nothing he can really do. Beyond is unfortunately just over at mid, unable to provide any additional catch. Pretty much got those two BKBs now though. How's the Slark doing? He's got 2.9k gold towards his next item, which is also going to be a BKB. So everyone just amassing BKBs across the board. SF already level 20. Already has that plus 150 shadow raise damage. Oh man, he is, he's getting real scary. No 
with this tier 2 dead at bottom, this is, there's actually so much room for the Slark to work with and keep on farming up down here. That is the one kind of... Well, that's the really nice thing about having Slark against the Jakiro. Normally this would be the situation where Jakiro is constantly shoving out this lane and just being a nuisance, but the Slark can kind of kill him at any time. So unfortunately Raji is having to play behind his cores, which is not really the situation that you want to be in as a Jakiro. PL still feeling somewhat comfortable to farm out on the map. He is still going to be going back for the Manta, which I find... He can't decide. He had SNY queued up, and then he's like, oh, Manta, but Manta doesn't even feel that good. So I guess I'll just go BKB. Uh, I would not mind seeing an early nullifier of this game. I think it's a very, very strong item on this hero, but... Uh, are they going to be going for smoke? All right. Smoked up. Clockwork thinking about showing over here at mid. He's going to grab some farm. The Radiant Scan is going to reveal the position of the Slark. He gets his BKB delivered, though. Might be difficult to find him. He's waiting up here on the hill. Doom going to lead. Can he find the Doom? Yes, he can, but they need to lock this Slark down a little bit further. They've also got the net. Nicely done. Arrow's going to fly through, but he gets completely soaked. Slark's now gone. They haven't even popped the exorcism for this. They're just going to let the Macro Pyre do its work. Radiant's They're going to set their sights on this mid tier 2 tower. Shadow Fiend's split pushing for all he's worth up top. And he has already completed this Aghanim Scepter. So big team fight pickup for him. James wants to lock him down. He manages to blink it, but he can't really combo with the Requiem, so he just tries to go in with the raises. Now he gets Yules up and locked down. Can he even find anything here? FTD are just converging on him. He pops the BKB and then goes for the Requiem. Is that going to be enough to keep him alive? It's coming back. He heals back up. He gets the raise out. He kills the Doom. He's turning around. He wants you. Love you. Love me as well. And now PL can just man up and hopefully finish the job. They need to be careful of the Death Requiem, but it's not enough to finish either of these two cores. SF goes down fighting, and doing that is going to prevent this mid-tier 2 tower from being pushed, but that is still a huge loss. A bunch of gold going the way of the Death Prophet. Raji just <laughs> sitting in the trees. Alright, macro firing some waves. Radiant's bottom like tower is under attack. Hard to play against the Slark, but still finding a way to do his job. Lots and lots of sentries getting planted everywhere this game. We'll have to make sure to check at the end of the game what the the sentry tallies end up being. FTD do seem to be eroding this lead just a little bit. Phantom Lancer still just thinking about the BKB. Marana's got that Mjolnir, still continuing to scale. Gonna have that level 20 mana break before too long. Slark, well, I guess we haven't really seen what he's planning since he died immediately after picking up the BKB. Hasn't really grabbed too much more fun. Gem even gonna be picked up now for the Lash. He's probably also thinking like, man, I bought so many goddamn sentries this game. Let's just, uh, let's just buy Gem. If they lose the Gem, though, then they are going to be in some deep deep trouble. We've got level 18 on the Death Prophet, so she's got the level 3 Exorcism. Doom back off cooldown in a couple of seconds time. Beyond just keeps on scouting. And Slark, interestingly enough, is just going to be going for a Scotty here. I wondered if maybe Lincoln's would be the choice. Dyer's bottom tower um, given that he is having a little bit of trouble with the Doom. But in in theory, the idea is that he shouldn't really be getting doomed because he should be sitting a little bit away from the fight in Shadow Blade, and then the fight gets initiated, and that's when he takes his opportunity to come in. Dyer's so, bottom tower. That'd be easier said than done. FTD sizing up for two towers, but Dyer's bottom also tower sending a four-man smoke across the map, cutting to try and find something. Yeah, no, it looks like CDC have kind of realized that this is going on. PL didn't commit for the bottom push, but oh, they might still catch somebody. Slark jumping through the pit, but Roshan's still going to be dead for another minute and 15 seconds. And the Radiant do see a couple of heroes on this freshly planted Observer Ward, so they know that, for the most part, CDC have dodged away from them. Seeing the Marana and the Lesh, along with the Shadow Fiend at bottom, Alright, they actually just see everybody. They know that all five heroes are up here. 
Alright, so they should now spread out onto the map and grab some farm, but they are also probably worried about a smoke immediately after that D-Ward. So, what are they doing? They're gonna go for a smoke of their own. They have picked one up on James. They get a four staff for some slightly easier positioning with the Song of the Siren. Raji, still not really any items to speak of, but plenty of playmaking potential for him in these upcoming fights. Actually, really important that they don't lose him since he's the biggest combo with the the Naga Siren. All right, potential fight here at the mid lane. FTD smoked up for better positioning. They got BKB on the Phantom Lance. You can really hard commit to this fight. They're gonna pop the dust. The hook ends up missing. Beyond up on the high ground. He's got the Doom at the ready. He's also got the BKB ready to pop. CDC trying to loop around to re-engage. What can they actually find? Phantom Lancer, a little bit out from his team, but both teams have really crappy initiation for the second. Unless James chooses to go back in, he could pop the song and force staff, but everyone is still just too afraid. It's just an old-fashioned game of chicken. And nobody is going in. But Roshan's up. Alright, last time FTD did this, turned out to be a pretty poor decision, but maybe this time around... It's going to look a little bit better. They have popped the exorcism for this. Bottom wave's pushing in somewhat. Rocket Flare going to scout. Hook on cooldown, but only for another 10 seconds time. They're running over as fast as they can. they got to keep on spamming this Solar Crest to try and get through it fast enough. Hook shot in 4 seconds. Hook shot in 3 seconds. Song comes out. They get the Doom out of the Shadow Fiend. They should also be able to set up for an Ice Path. Raji's running forward. There's the Macropire. There's the Ice Path. The Hook shot forward onto the Death Drop, but she's got the BKP. They're going to shred the Shadow Fiend before he does anything. Verana's doing loads of damage. But now just trapped, almost kills off the Phantom Lancer, but he's going to be okay. He's still got the Aegis, two buybacks as the Shadow Fiend looks to re-engage. He's not going to have max souls, though. Is that going to matter for this fight? He pops the BKB, now going to go for the Requiem. Phantom Lancer's lost his first life. He won't be able to arrow him, it's on cooldown. Death Prophet gets off a good silence, and now it's Phantom Lancer's opportunity to shine. Sark still has his ultimate, so he's able to commit. He's going to start right-clicking through. Phantom Lancer with the BKB, just not doing enough damage. His build is tanky, but he's not actually killing anyone. As he gets kited around, it's a double kill for the Mirana. The Phantom Lancer trying to hide in amongst his illusions. He pops the cheese at the last moment, tries to kill off Ego. He will do it, but it's just too much right-click from the Mirana, along with the Minus Armor from the Shadow Fiend. CDEC, it cost them some buybacks, but they win that fight handedly. And they just didn't take any damage. Look at the damage output of the Mirana. She was just right-clicking the entire time. 8.3k damage dealt. I mean, it doesn't even have the highest damage build, but the Mjolnir along with those leaps is doing so much work. The Mana Break as well, they've even found Love You Love Me, he's got the BKB off cooldown, he's gonna be okay, they just wanted to force out the Phantom Lancer buyback, what can he actually find? Marana pops the BKB and just stands here right clicking, almost kills off the Krob, oh it's not quite going to be enough. Leap is on cooldown and he will be finished off at the end of the day. It's only a dominating streak ended though, and that is... The Krob buyback, that's the Phantom Lancer buyback also being forced. God. Marana definitely looking like a good hero. I think the other thing is FTD used Exorcism to take Roshan. Both, I think both of these fights have gone badly because they just choose to use the Exorcism to take Rosh. Like, why not use the Exorcism to take Rosh, then pop Song to disengage? and then wait for your exorcism cooldown. Instead, they're just basically not fighting with Krob as a hero. You looked at the damage dealt numbers in that last fight, and the lead was Phantom Lancer at 3k. They, they spent the entire exorcism just killing Roshan. And then, death, and then Mirana spent the entire fight just killing everybody. All right, so still some pretty valuable buybacks used on both sides. Net worth not gonna be moving too much. Still only about a 5k lead in favor of the Dire. Slark still not really getting all that close to his Scotty. Unfortunately, did just barely end up dying in that last fight. And Phantom Lancer is actually going for a Scotty of his own. I don't know if I've ever seen a pro player be so indecisive about his item build. But I suppose the Scotty is also okay. I guess you do you go for the crit talent in that situation? He's, he's got so much survivability, it feels like he actually did some damage for his team. And I'd like to see what FTD are capable of if they actually just use an exorcism in a fight. Maybe, okay, Doom's got a blink down, so some of their initiation problems are going to be fixed by that. Lesh is buying an Aeon Disc. And Clockwork, still just running around with this gem. Fortunately, they did not lose it in the previous fight. 
But there is also a gem on the FTD side. Beyond picking that one up. They're going to come running forward. What can they find? Beyond not going to commit for this fight. They actually don't have their Phantom Lancer there. They smoked up, but they didn't bring everybody. And now they're going to get the jump in on top of both the Naga and the Jakira. Can they actually find this fight? James not using the song just yet. And he won't even get the opportunity. He just gets shredded. Both of the supports are dead. They do now have the Phantom Lancer in the back lines. Looking for additional kills. He kills the one support. He's also going to kill the second. It's only supports dead so far. And a couple of BKBs being popped. If they can just kite out this exorcism... I think that CDEC can re-engage into this fight. Only about half of the duration left, and they also bought back on the Naga Siren. Yeah, this is a, this is a really good disadvantage for CDEC. And PL, all right, he did go for the crit. Doom got used in that fight. I don't know quite on who. Maybe one of the supports ended up copying it. PL does take his number one spot on the net worth now. He's actually the one carrying the gem. AST is pushing up bottom, almost has himself a hex. Oh man, that's gonna be really scary. With the 40% cooldown reduction on the Shadow Fiend, I was a little bit worried seeing his build that they weren't gonna have enough. No, well, not that they weren't going to have enough right-click damage. I suppose they do have a Mirana and a Slark, but I am just—I've been absolutely blown away by how much damage this Mirana has been doing. I guess you just look at her talents, and that's that's where it's all coming from. Plus 20 damage, plus 100 attack speed on leap, plus 25 mana break. If you pop BKB and you just leap and you're using the full duration to attack, <laughs> you are doing so much work. Reef. FTD just sitting here nursing their wounded tier 3 tower. Radiant What's he even got? Just gonna be working on securing another gem, it looks like. Slark has picked up a silver edge. What is what is that for? Does this do anything in this game? Who's got passives? Okay, Naga has four actives. I mean PL has juxtapose. Sure. That's, that's kind of annoying for him if you can hit the right one. Doom's got no passives, jakiro has got no passives. Death Prophet doesn't have any passives anymore. R.I.P. Witchcraft, which was just a stupid, really boring ability, but I, what, I don't know what the Silver Edge is for, Mr. Slark. Are you going to disassemble it? I mean, you can. It, it is an option, but you lose 300 gold by doing so because you don't get the recipe. Or you lose 600 gold by doing so because you don't get the recipe back. Yeah, I don't know. Sark scouting. Phantom Lancer has that full Scotty. He is very tanky. 4.1k HP. Both teams just kind of playing this game of chicken again over at mid lane. Beyond this one, Shiva's net worth lead has dwindled all the way down to 3k. Next Roshan is going to be very important because of the Refresher Shard. Definitely something to watch out for. And this SF Hex. Definitely needs to be shown some respect by the FTD side. They do at least have the one four staff on James, but he mostly needs that for his own positioning and for getting out of the cogs. Do have to give Clockwork some props as well for how he's been initiating these fights. It's not easy for Clockwork to initiate into these five on fives, but he's been finding the right target very consistently. ASD goes jumping in, gets the hex off. Careful though, he gets doomed, and this might just be a straight up throw. He's gonna end up dying to the Scotty, and I don't think he has buyback. Slark's focusing onto the Death Prophet. The Aeon just pops, he gets his BKB off. James is being focused, he gets up onto the high ground, manages to get the mirror images out. He will finally be finished off, but they've already lost the SF, and FTD doing a good job of just fighting together. I don't know what SF was thinking. I, I don't even think he was. Like, even if he gets that. Even if he gets BKB off a little bit earlier, he has to know that all of FTD are just Dyer's right there. Middle tower has fallen. Oh, all right, Exorcism about to run out. That's still dead for 95 seconds, so it's completely up to the Mirana and the Slark to defend this one. At least Doom is on cooldown. Along with Exorcism, Arakun's flying through. They don't have the Naga to disengage with the jump in. They've got the stomp. They've got big damage. Mirana being brought down doesn't have a buyback either, and this could just be straight up game. CDEC, you played so well for 40 minutes. And now they stumble at the very last hurdle. 
We're also going to lose the Lesh to the Phantom Lancer. He was indecisive about his item build the entire game, but it looks like this Scotty has done the trick. They're going to take out the tier 3, and they ping straight onto the tier 4. There hasn't been a buyback used yet, and it won't even be all about the third rush. It's going to be all about the MTD just taking this game right here, right now. Lesh buys back, but it's only the two supports to defend for the next 50 seconds. Yeah, just, just call it, boys. I, I have to admit, I'm impressed by CDEC. They're mathematically eliminated. This match for them does not matter in the slightest, but they, uh, they, they really tried their hearts out. But unfortunately, they are going to be ending the TI-8 China qualifiers with a 0-7 record. Not a single win to their names. And FTD actually one step closer to having the best record in the China Qualifier, they're now 5-1 and one, with still one match uh, left to play. So it could potentially overtake Team Serenity, though that's going to come down to their result against LFY. And let's go have a look at those Sentry numbers. How much money was spent on Sentry Wards that game? Dun dun dun. Alright, so Raji, the reason that he never had any money is because he bought 31 Sentry Wards. And 17 observers, 4.6k spent. Leshrac, the reason that he didn't have any money is because he bought 25 sentry wards and 19 observers. Oh, God. Tough game for those two supports, but Raji triumphant in the end. Um, that, ra that about wraps it up. Let's have a look at these graphs quickly. I really thought it was going to be the easiest game for FTD. CDC proved me wrong for the longest time, and then... Uh, one one throw from the Shadow Fiend was all that it took for the game to end on the spot. So that is going to wrap it up for this one, guys. Uh, I'm not any clearer on the tiebreaker situation. All right, apparently Young Dumb are also mathematically eliminated now. Keen Gaming are four and three. Invictus Gaming have one game left to play against Young Dumb. If they win that, then we have no tiebreakers, or maybe there will be some tiebreakers. Uh, you know what, I'm going to sort, I'll, I'll figure it out during the break, and when we come back at the beginning of the next game for LFY versus FTD, uh, I'll let you guys know what how the, the tiebreaker breakdown is going. So, thank you very much for watching. I think CIS has started, so make sure you go and enjoy all the coverage across the other streams of the TI-8 Qualifier Hub, and I'll be back for that next game in just a couple of minutes.